Hey friends, and welcome back to Cleaning Therapy. My name is Jenny, if you're new here, and thank you so much for your patience. I am so happy to be back with you guys and finally able to share a new video with you. It has been a crazy couple of weeks, but that's okay. It's over and we are moving on and finishing up this decluttering series. So if you are new here, we're closing out a cleaning therapy series here on the channel called Dare to Declutter. So it's just a go at your own pace, whole house decluttering series. And so this will be episode four and the last video in this series. I will put together a compilation of all of the videos so that if you are still decluttering or if you have some cleaning and organizing to do around your house, you can go ahead and put that playlist on and get to work and we can do this together. I'll be working in Alex's room today. He's my four-year-old, and he definitely has the most to declutter in his room. So I'm starting by just emptying out his closet the best I can, at least the top of the closet, so that I can get the shelves dusted off and cleaned off with my Mrs. Myers all-purpose spray. I just wanted to say that I will be decluttering a lot of sentimental items today. And when I say decluttering, I don't mean I'm getting rid of them, but I mean that I'm you know, working through them, processing through sentimental items. So I don't know if you're anything like me, but this is so hard and it's not a coincidence that I saved this video for last because going through Alex's baby things, now that he's almost four and a half, and just making those decisions of what to keep long term and what to go ahead and donate is not the easiest thing for me to do. All of my kids have a large bin with their name on it and it's just memories from when they were a baby, mostly from their first year of life, but then sometimes some toddler memories as well. You know, a favorite book that I used to read to them, their favorite blankets and all of their really, really cute outfits that I just can't part with, the shoes that they learned to walk in and other sentimental items. So I had these two ivory bins in the top of Alex's closet that I had been collecting things in. And so today was the day that I wanted to make those decisions. Let me know in the comments where you're at in your decluttering process around your house, how you're coming along and what kind of progress you've made. I would love to hear about it. And the way I'm doing this here is I'm just kind of sorting through things and trying to categorize them. So as you can see, I've got the holiday things, Halloween costumes and Christmas things and all the things that I think were associated with a holiday in one pile. And then I also have like bibs in a pile and stuffed animals. And I'm just trying to sort through as much as I can just to see how much I have of each thing and which ones stand out the most to me as a keepsake item. If you're not yet subscribed to Cleaning Therapy, I would invite you to do so now if you'd like to. I'd love to have you as a part of my YouTube family. I like to make relaxing cleaning motivation videos here on YouTube. I hope that they're enjoyable for you to watch and I hope that they also inspire and motivate you to get some things done in your house or give you some new ideas about how to go about that. I'm also on Instagram at Jenny Teal and I'd love for us to become friends over there as well. Stay tuned because I've got lots of spring cleaning content coming up. We're going to deep clean this whole house and I'm ready for it. I'm ready for spring weather. I'm ready for spring cleaning and I hope you'll join me here on the channel.
Another way I like to look at sentimental items and deciding what to keep is what do I want to remember? So I like to kind of curate the box to where everything inside would be something that we would want to remember and something that would kind of bring us joy and bring us happiness. I feel like sometimes if we keep too many things, then it can almost feel overwhelming or distracting. Like if I kept all of Alex's baby shoes, like all 15, 20 pairs of shoes that he's worn for like the first three years of his life, I think that that would be a little bit overwhelming. And the longer you keep things, I find the harder it is to get rid of them because you think, well, I've kept them this long. So I really don't want to disappoint myself and throw them away now because they're kind of like a time capsule now. So I think it's a little bit harder to get rid of things the longer you keep them. So that is why I'm challenging myself to make these decisions now while he's young, because it's not likely I'll be able to throw them away if I hold on to them for 20 years. I don't need to keep every single birthday card or every single christening card. I can just keep you know, a few just to kind of like be a place keeper for that event. It's hard to do this, but I find that that's the best way to do it. And I know with my older kids, whenever I open their boxes, it really is such a special thing because it really is all of our favorite things as opposed to just everything, if you know what I mean. So it's the things that sparked like all the most wonderful memories and the best times of that season. As I was looking through Alex's books, I actually found one of my books from my childhood and inside there's even a picture of my mom reading me that same book. So that is definitely a keepsake and I must have taken it out to read it to Alex and now I'll put it back into my memory bin. Now that I've decluttered through the newborn things and the early baby things, I also have some of these clothes from when he was, I don't know, an older baby and then maybe just starting to walk and things like that. So I do wanna save a few of these early outfits just because it's good to have a little variety, I think, of like the ages of things that you save, just in case you wanna look at it later or in case you know his kids end up wearing any of it. I just think that's fun. All of my kids have worn at least something that their parents wore as well, and I just think that's a really fun thing to do. So I'm trying to save some of the things that um, are in better condition and just held up better and some of my favorites as well. So I've been thinking of ways to kind of get to know you guys a little bit better lately. I know you can get to know me on my videos and sometimes I just feel like I want to get to know you guys a little bit better. I see your names in the comments and I feel like we've been getting to know each other over the last couple of years. And I feel like if I ask maybe a question or two each video, we can get to know each other um, a little bit better that way. So my question for you today is how many siblings do you have? Are you an only child or do you have siblings and how many do you have? So as for me, I do have a younger brother. His name is Ross and he's about three and a half years younger than me. He's extremely tall. He's like 6'5" 
and he has dark blonde hair and like bluish green eyes. He's very sweet and he's married to his beautiful, wonderful wife, Carrie, who is my sister-in-law. So I love them very, very much and I'm very grateful that they live pretty close by. Ross and Carrie live about 30 minutes away from our house. So that is my sibling story and I would love to hear yours. So now that I have allocated what will go in Alex's bin, I'll go ahead and take these books and I thought I'd just put them in this white bin. These are actually the off-season books for his bookshelf, so I'm kind of putting away anything that's like Halloween or Christmas or even spring because I don't have those out quite yet and I'll store them in these white bins. The older kids actually have these white bins at the top of their closet for off-season clothes, but since Alex doesn't ever have off-season clothes, he has to get like a new wardrobe every season because he's still growing. So I'm gonna use these for other purposes. I have this cracked Lego bin that I thought I would use another white bin for. And then the last one I'll use for his shoes so I just thought that was a good way to get these things up and kind of use the top of his closet so now I'm gonna work on this side I'll get it cleaned off and then I'll go through his clothes Alex really doesn't have a lot of clothes this winter season I'm not really sure how that happened I know a lot of it is in the wash right now but even so I don't feel like he has a ton of clothes for the winter season so I only decluttered one shirt now I'm gonna go ahead and get this kitchen out of here. I like to keep these larger things in his closet as kind of a play space and it works really well for him and it allows his room not to be as crowded or cluttered. So I'll pull that out and give this a cleaning as well. Now that the kitchen is out of the closet, I can see better what's all on the floor here. So I just wanted to clean off the little bins that I have here for his little play kitchen food so that I could clean up all of that first. So I'll just be searching on the floor for all of the kitchen food. And then when I'm done with that, I'll switch over to the items that go with the workbench. And as I'm cleaning up all the kitchen food, I'm just kind of inspecting everything and making sure that it's in good condition. The wooden pieces usually hold up really well, but he does have a set of plastic food and some of those were cracked. So I just made sure to set those aside. Unfortunately, the camera was wanting to focus on that little drill instead of the food that I was um, grabbing from the back. So sorry for that. My camera definitely is a little unpredictable for me sometimes. I'm still trying to figure out like exactly how I have to set up a shot in order for it to focus on the right thing. <laughs> but after I was done cleaning up the food, I went ahead and got these plates and put them back in the little dish rack. 
and then I wanted to clean off all his pots and pans before getting everything put back in the kitchen. Now that everything's picked up off the floor and decluttered, I'm gonna go ahead and get this floor cleaned up. So I'll go ahead and sweep it. I'm gonna clean the baseboards too, and then I'll give it a mop. I've really been loving this little mop here that I picked up off of Amazon. It was so affordable and it's very lightweight. And it's just a really quick, easy way to kind of clean my wood floors because it's just, it's a nice dust mop and then you can put the solution right in the mop and you can use any solution you want. And I like to use the Method Almond Scent. I just think it smells so good. And I love just pulling out this mop and doing quick cleanings and not having to worry about getting the bucket out with the water. Okay, here's a shot of the closet, all cleaned and decluttered. I'm super happy with it. There's so much more space in here now, and it's just easier to walk into when everything is put back where it belongs. So I'm really happy with it. I'm so glad that this part is done. And then we're gonna move on into Alex's room and we'll declutter his dresser and his toys and his toy box as well. So stay tuned. I'll start here in his little cubbies. This is where we keep his smaller toys. So I'm just gonna declutter all this for him. If I have him involved, I know he's gonna wanna keep every single thing like any four-year-old would. And I'm really just gonna declutter the broken toys, the toys that I know he doesn't play with, or the really cheap like Happy Meal toys or things like that that he's not really interested in is gonna get decluttered. And I'm just using this basket just to make it easy. And then the things you see me setting on the side are just things that belong back in the closet, either with his refrigerator or his workbench.
Now moving on to this toy box, this is where he keeps his larger toys. So again, I'm just pulling everything out and I'm gonna clean the inside of it really well. And then if I find any broken toys or missing parts or things that just don't belong with anything, I'll go ahead and declutter it. And if you hang around to the end, not only will you see what I was able to declutter from Alex's room, but also what I was able to declutter from this whole series. So that is coming up. Okay, so this pile is the things that belong in the closet. So things that belong to his refrigerator or his workbench. And then I also found a couple of little figures from his nativity set from Christmas. And then this is the declutter pile of like the broken toys and like toys he doesn't play with anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and get everything put back where it belongs from that first pile. And then we will move on to his dresser. Before I do his dresser, I just wanted to pull these out real quick and clean in here because I was cleaning everything else that I was decluttering. So I wanted to go ahead and clean these as well. I don't pull these out every single week to clean them. So this was a really good opportunity to do this. Now I'm gonna tackle this dresser here. Again, not a ton in this dresser. A lot of his stuff is in the wash, but there are some things that I would like to get out of here. Swimsuits that are not gonna fit him come this summer and winter things that he might not be able to use next winter. And I really just wanna get these drawers cleaned out as well and of course decluttered. So I'm gonna go ahead and tackle that right now.
friends, here's what I decluttered from Alex's room. I went ahead and put it into the black trash bags. That lets me know that it's donation. And this is what I was able to declutter from my home from this four part series. I hope that you were able to get lots decluttered from your home as well. And I hope that you enjoyed this series. Thank you so much for joining me today and thank you for decluttering with me. No matter what you're going through, you can always come over to my channel and we can clean our way to calm together. I love you friends so much and I'll see you guys next week.